dental health and why it is so important uh, for your for your pet's care um, and part of being a responsible owner it is something that is often overlooked I'm going to include pictures of all of my critters teeth kind of give you guys a reference there's periodontal disease is what we're mostly going to be focusing on and that's where it really starts to affect the gums the bone health of the teeth and everything like that. So it starts off as plaque and then tartar and then just builds up and starts destroying your pet's teeth, um, causing infections, things like that. And so there's different grades. It goes on a scale from one to four. And so Nidra, she's only a year and a half. Little dogs often start having problems a lot earlier than larger breeds do. Um, and she already has a little bit of tartar but it's not causing any problems at this point. Um, and so she'll probably need a dental anywhere between two to three years old. She'll start needing to, to get dental cleanings. Boo Boo um, doesn't really have any gum involvement. Maybe a little bit of redness, so she'd probably be about a one, so it's very mild at this point. Um, it's not really causing any infections, there's no pockets, anything like that at this point. But it is causing a little bit of gingivitis, um, and so she definitely needs to get into for dental. Marley would probably be about a grade two. And I'll insert pictures as, I, as I'm talking about each one. So Marley needs to get to have a dental soon. Um, it is starting to affect his gums. He does have gingivitis, but it hasn't caused any pockets or anything as far as we can tell. Um, so within the next six months, he definitely needs to get in for a dental. Shunka is definitely a grade four. Um, she has, I mean, her teeth are just covered in the tartar. And there are several reasons why I'm not getting her dental cleaning done at this point. She, her age, age is not a reason not to get done. Especially, you know, she's going to be 15. You might have a 15 year old small breed dog and they can live upwards of 20. So that's five years. And so they would really still probably need a dental. Shuki's kind of at the end of her lifespan, I would say. She might have a year or so left, um, but I would say that's probably pushing it, just kind of watching how she's declined this past year. Uh, I mean, I hope for as much time as I can have with her, but being realistic, she does have doggy dementia, her liver enzymes are elevated, and last few times she went under anesthesia, she did fine under the anesthesia, but when she woke up, she had a really hard time. Um, she, she was very confused, very upset, flailing around and such. And so with her doggy dementia, her arthritis, and knowing her liver values are elevated and she's at the end of her lifespan, those are kind of some reasons why I'm not choosing to get her teeth taken care of at this point in her life. But again, that's something you should discuss with your veterinarian if you do have an older dog um, that might be at the end of its life or, or you know, may have several years, but you're concerned. That's something you should definitely talk about with your veterinarian. Adeline might be considered a grade three. Um, she has some problems but it's nowhere near as bad as Shunka's. So I did try to take pictures of the cats. You can imagine that wasn't very easy. 
Um, and so eyeliner would probably be like a grade three. Watson actually does have a little bit of redness and irritation, which I was kind of surprised to see when I was trying to take a picture. Um, so you don't see their teeth as often as they see the dog's teeth. Um, and so he would probably be about a grade two, two or three. And then I'm probably more of a two. And then uh, Sherlock's teeth are completely fine. So he doesn't really have any tartar, no issues with his gums, anything like that. And cats get a couple weird things, so we are going to be talking about that later on as well. Um, and so basically today I'm going to do it kind of a Q&A style, and I got, like I said, some snackies for the dogs, so they'll be kind of in and out, and, you know, grab your dog, grab some snacks, and let's go ahead and get into it. I do have my little notebook full of the questions, so I wrote down some of the ones I remember people commonly asking from when I was working in both veterinary clinics, and I also went online um, to see, you know, find some different questions that maybe I didn't think of. And so first, when do they get their adult teeth? So I'm talking about dogs and cats. Um, different breeds obviously vary a little bit, but generally they start getting their adult teeth between four to six months, with their last set of teeth being the canines that come in right around six months. Um, and so it does kind of vary individual dogs, breeds, but that's the norm. And cats, cats kind of follow that same rule as well. Now, how many teeth do they have? Um, well, to, for comparison, we normally have 32 teeth. Dogs actually have 42 teeth, and cats have 30 teeth. So, if your dog and cat has an extra tooth, is this normal? And the answer is no, it's not. Um, sometimes they will retain their deciduous teeth, which is um, their baby teeth. And so, especially in small breeds, they'll retain their canines. And so they'll have two sets of canines. And you'll see the one will be thinner and pointier, just not as sturdy, essentially. And that can cause a lot of problems with their permanent dentition. Um, and that's really, really common in small breed dogs. See it sometimes in cats and sometimes in large breed, um, but small breeds we see it all the time. There, um, there are some breeds that can have extra adult teeth. That is pretty common to see. Breeds like terriers can have some extra teeth. Again, that often cause, causes problems though because there's not enough room in their mouth for the extra teeth. And so those oftentimes need to be removed as well. It just kind of depends on the, the dog um, and what your pet says. But if your pet has extra teeth, it's definitely something you need to get checked out and discuss with your vet. So I have some carrots here. One of my favorite things to do is to, oh, sorry, Barley, I shocked him, is to give them whole carrots. Uh, it makes a great chew. I get the little bag. And I pulled out the smaller ones for Nini's and Shunky, since Shunky does have bad teeth. Um, I don't have any more of those, but I did have some baby carrots that I need to use up. So we're going to be giving the dogs baby carrots today, um, which they absolutely love. Um, they love carrots to, to pieces. So this is one of my favorite snacks to give them, um, and it makes a great great chew for their for their teeth so you can give them a couple of those and then I also have some mini milk bones which they really like as well um, and we'll talk a little bit more about what types of treats and such can help with their dental health as well so boo boo don't help yourself boo boo loves to try to help herself to things huh I do no she says but I want more Dude, she loves, she loves her carrots. Um, and the next thing, which I didn't even think about as a question, but I saw uh, pop up several different times, was do they get cavities and do their gums recede? They rarely get cavities, 
but their gums do recede as periodontal disease progresses. So that's pretty common. And so the next question is what kind of conditions and such do they get? And so periodontal disease is the most common. Like I said, that's kind of the separation of the gum um, from the tooth structure itself. They get pockets and then it just sets up for infection and then that kind of eats away at the roots and the bones and such. And so it can progress and be really nasty. Um, sometimes it can even eat through, especially on their bottom jaw. We've seen where it's eaten through the bone on their bottom jaw. And so their bone is effectively non-existent. And so essentially they have a broken jaw. Um, they can also get gingivitis just like we can, abscesses, tooth loss. Cats get two separate things. One is called a resorptive lesion. Um, and what that is, is essentially their, their body's eating away at their tooth. And so that is super painful. Uh, and you can see it'll kind of be like a, a pink lesion right above the gum line or like a little divot in there sometimes. And that's something that can be, like I said, extremely painful and definitely something you want to be checked out by your veterinarian. And they also get a thing called feline stomatitis. That's not the full name. Full name's really long, um, but some if you just type in feline stomatitis or talk to your vet about it, they would be able to kind of educate you. And what that is, is their body's essentially rejecting their teeth, and so they can get like a lot of ulcers, and a lot of times we see like their canines being like pushed out, so it's really red and angry around that area, um, and very painful again. And a lot of times what happens is they actually have to have all their teeth removed. Sometimes you can remove some of like the canines um, or put them on a medication. Mostly steroids, which isn't necessarily good for them. And so like I said, and a lot of times they end up losing all their teeth anyway. So again, um, if you know you have concerns or anything, just talk to your vet. But cats are a little bit weird. What is the most common dental problem? That is periodontal disease, and like I've already kind of explained what that is. What does it mean if they have a loose, or I mean a discolored tooth? So there's several different reasons. The most common one being the tooth is dead or dying, so it might change to like a pinkish color, purple, black, just kind of looks off, um, and that can mean that the tooth is dead or dying. Another reason, um, is some medications do cause discolorations and some diseases. The only one I know of, I shouldn't say some because I don't know for sure of specific diseases that might cause discoloration except for distemper. Um, distemper can affect their teeth. So if they do survive it, they can have wonky teeth essentially. So um, let's see here. The next one is can pets have root canals or get crowns? The answer is actually yes, but you need to go to a specialty, specialty center for that. Most local veterinarians do not have the ability to do that, so they're going to recommend extraction um, if the tooth is really bad because they just don't have the capabilities and a lot of people can't afford to go to a specialty center. And dogs do, dogs and cats do perfectly well if they do need to have a tooth extracted um, or several. So I know a lot of people get scared when their pet has a lot of extractions, but most of the time they feel better and they actually end up eating better because they don't have those problem teeth causing pain anymore. And so um, if you can't afford a specialty center, don't, you know, feel bad. Just understand that your local veterinarian is not going to be able to do as much as a specialty center. So, if your pet has a broken tooth, should you be concerned? And the answer is yes. Sometimes it might just be like a little crack and your pet doesn't really act painful. They hide pain really well. And it's not like us where we can just run to the, the dentist. Um, they kind of still have to keep doing their thing. So... If they have a broken tooth, it is something to be concerned about because you don't know how far up into the structure it goes. 
and it can cause infection and it is painful and so it is something that needs to be addressed so if your pet does have a broken tooth definitely get it checked out um my vet said my pet has grade four periodontal disease what does that mean and so like i said it, it ranges on a scale from one some places go zero meaning no signs of periodontal disease at all but for periodontal disease it's on a scale from one to four four being the worst um and so four is there's bone loss i think it's greater than 50 percent i'm not entirely sure if i'm remembering that right but i think bone loss is greater than 50 percent um is considered or grade four the gums can ha have separated from the teeth and like I said, infections just kind of eating away. Grade three would be, um, a, you know, less than 50% of bone loss, but they are having gum separation, infection, things like that. Grade two, the gums are just starting to kind of separate, um, and, and cause the infections or the plaque and tartars starting to cause problems. And then grade one is very mild, and so there is some gum involvement, but it hasn't pulled away from the tooth at all. There's no pockets, things like that. So that's ideally when you would want to get your pet in is when they're at a grade one before there's any problems. So like I said, zero would be no problem at all. Um, they don't really need anything yet. So... If your pet lost a tooth, should you be concerned? The answer depends. If it's a baby tooth they lost, no. Baby tooth, teeth are supposed to fall out. Um, most time you won't see it. They either swallow it or they lose it in the yard. And so it's really not a problem. If it's an adult tooth that they lost, yes. You should be concerned because... Um, they may have just lost the crown, which is the part you can see, and so there might be still a root broken off up where you can't see below the gum line. Um, and so you, you do want to get it checked out. If your pet loses a tooth, um, you do want to take them to the vet, and they most likely will need a dental with x-rays just to assess to see if there's any root fragments or anything like that left over. Um, from the broken tooth so sometimes if you find the tooth that broke off and it's very rarely for them to just have an adult tooth break off I've seen it happen happen when they got like in a fight um, one case comes to mind where there was a pit bull who got into a fight and he actually <laughs> it was kind of gross but his canine was like sideways and the doctor was able to just pull it out um, and it was fully intact so she was able to see that it was fully intact um, but you always want to get that checked out because if there's any root left that can set them up for infection and, and can be painful and such so um, let's see here my pet is young why would they have problems so like I said before Small breeds often have problems early. It's just kind of the way we we bred them. Um, dachshunds, chihuahuas, um, minpins, breeds like that. We often see dental disease very early on. And so that's not really that uncommon. Um, and even in larger breeds, you got to look at us. We brush our teeth from the moment we get them we start brushing teeth and that happens every day sometimes twice a day depending on on the person and so with dogs by the time they're three years old they've already lived three years and we haven't brushed their teeth at all um, or if you're like me I brush once a week I should be brushing daily um, and sometimes I don't even make the once a week so that's three years of plaque and tartar building up and so that's why it's not uncommon to see dental problems early on in their in their life so <laughs> you see we love carrots huh you like little bunnies who spit carrot out boo 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 <laughs> 
Boo is helping herself. Come on, Boo Boo. Get down. Come on. Don't be shenanigans. All right, let's see here. <sighs> My pet is it acting painful, can I wait? So like I said, a lot of times they won't act in pain until it is really severe. Even now, as severe as Shinpi's dental disease is, she does not act like she's in pain at all, minus there's certain treats she really doesn't seem interested in anymore. But she still eats her hard food, she still chows down on the carrots, things like that. And so just because they're not acting in pain does not mean it's painful. And you want to get it before it's super painful and before it starts causing infection and bone loss and such. So, boo boo, come on. So just because they're not acting painful, it's not okay to wait. Let's see here. Will a dental cleaning help? my dog's or cat's breath? The answer most often is yes. It depends though on what's causing the bad breath. Most often it is caused from the bacteria um, buildup from the plaque and the tartar and such. So if that's the case, it will help. There are some diseases like kidney disease and diabetes that can often cause a smell, um, especially kidney disease. If any of you have ever had a pet that has kidney disease, you know the smell. Hey, Adeline, what are you doing? The cat's up on the counter where she's not supposed to be. So, um, and so there's also depending on what you feed them or what they eat. Like if they eat poop, for example, like Boo Boo likes to do, that's going to cause bad breath as well. Um, and then again, depending on what you feed them or if they lick their bottom a lot, things like that can also cause a smell. So. But most often, if it's caused by bacteria, boo boo, you need to come over here. Come <laughs> um, And so, like I said, it just kind of depends, though, on what's causing the smell. So, um, are anesthesia free dentals okay? The answer is absolutely not. So, there are people that will offer anesthesia free dentals, and these are not okay for several reasons. One, they can't do a good job. Um, there's just no way to get fully in their mouth with them awake. Two, when they're chipping off the tartar and scaling with a hand scale, because um, they're not using ultrasonic scaler because they can't, because the animal is awake, it is causing damage to the surface of the tooth. And so without polishing after they're done, and being able to get in there really well and polish, they're setting the teeth up to have little divots which causes the bacteria and the plaque and such to adhere more quickly to the teeth um, and cause more problems. And so that's why it is not okay to have an anesthesia-free dental. Um, and it's just not, I mean, I know people look at it as a way to save money, but you're really creating more problems in the long run. So it's really better to save that money to get an actual dental from a veterinarian. And so if somebody offers you an anesthesia-free dental, no, don't do it. Now, there are some groomers who will brush your dog's teeth, and that is fine. If you have a groomer that will brush your dog's teeth, that is great, because the more often your dog's teeth get brushed, um the better their dental health is going to be. And so that is fine. If you find somebody that will, is offering to brush the teeth, that's fine. But as far as cleaning the teeth, you need to have it done at a veterinarian under anesthesia. So that's really important as well. Can dental disease cause other problems? And the answer is also yes. So as they swallow the bacteria and it starts eating away, it can enter the bloodstream and it can go to the heart and cause problems with the heart. Kidney, liver, and lungs are the most common areas we'll see problems. And so it is really, again, important for your pet's overall health to make sure their teeth are good. So um, let's see, how much does a dental cleaning cost? This is going to vary depending on where you live and the individual clinic's practices. 
but you're definitely looking anywhere from a couple hundred into the thousand range ranges, um, just depending on where you live. Around here, a basic cleaning generally starts between 100 and 200, um, and that's just for the cleaning, and that's here in New Mexico, um, in the southern part of New Mexico. I'm sure, you know, in the bigger cities, it's probably more expensive, like Albuquerque or Las Cruces, but in the smaller towns, that's generally what I've seen the average be. And like I said, that's just for the cleaning. That doesn't include blood work, fluids, extractions, x-rays, anything like that. Um, and so generally, depending on if your pet needed everything, the upper end could be around 500 where I live. Um, but like I said, different cities, different states are going to be more expensive. I know in California it's really expensive. Um, we've had several people from there that have brought their pets in and gotten dentals and have been shocked that it's not more expensive. And so it really just depends on where you live. And like I said, it depends on your individual clinic practices. Where I'm at, and this is can be kind of controversial, um, some of the services like blood work and fluids and x-rays, we kind of offer as optional. And that saves people some money. Um, you know, obviously we recommend those things, but we also understand that not everybody has the finances to do it. And so that's kind of where I live. Some clinics, they automatically include that in their, in their packages. Um, and so your pet is going to get blood work before their dental cleaning. They're going to have fluids run throughout the entire procedure and they're automatically going to do x-rays. And that is the gold standard. That is what we want in dental practices. But where I live and where I've lived, it's been really small town retirement communities. There's not a lot of finances. And so if people had to do everything, they would choose not to get their pet's teeth done at all. Um, and, and then again, it depends on your pet's individual health. So it really just depends, like I said, where you live, your pet's health, and kind of the individual practices of the clinic you're going to. All right, sorry about that. My camera stopped working there. Um, so let's see here, where was I? What can I expect when I take my pet for a dental? So it really kind of depends, again, on where you live and your personal clinic, but most often they're going to want to do an exam first, and that's just to assess your pet's overall health, make sure there's no conditions that are going to affect the procedure, assess the teeth, determine how bad it is, see if they might need antibiotics before having the procedure, things like that. And so I have not yet to work with a veterinarian that does not require an exam first. And so that's really important. And then they'll schedule you a dental. Most of the time, it's just kind of an outpatient procedure. So you're going to drop them off in the morning and you're going to pick them up that afternoon. Where I worked, the way it would work is the technicians would go over the paperwork. And, well, it kind of varied between the clinics. One, the technicians would go over the paperwork. And at the other clinic I worked at, the receptionist actually went over the release form and such. Um... And then what they'll do is the technicians are going to be the one to do the blood work most often. And they're also going to be the ones doing the cleaning um, and the dental x-rays most of the time. Your veterinarian is going to be doing like a pre-anesthetic exam the day of. They're also going to be administering the anesthesia and doing any extractions as well as reviewing the x-rays and assessing the teeth and the whole mouth once your, your pet is under the anesthesia. Um, after that, most of the time the techs will polish and put on any, any products. There are some products that help um, prevent plaque buildup in the future so it kind of extends the time in between your pet needing another dental. Um, and that's like a, a sealant product essentially that just goes on the outside of the teeth to help prevent your pet needing 
a dental sooner rather than later. So, thank you. Um, let's see here. My vet wants to run blood work and administer fluids. Is it necessary? Like I said earlier, some veterinarians automatically require it no matter what. It's part of the package when your pet is getting a dental cleaning. They're going to be doing blood work. They're going to be doing fluids. They're automatically going to do x-rays. Other clinics, they kind of leave it as optional. Um, and then also depending on the age of your pet. So it might be optional for a younger pet. So Nini, say she needs a cleaning at three years old. They might not worry about running blood work because they really wouldn't expect to find anything wrong at her age. Again, it's always a good idea to run the blood work because you never know. Um, and then again, they may or may not run fluids since she is a really healthy dog. The procedure itself shouldn't take that long, things like that. Um, but many clinics do require that. And again, if your pet's older, has any medical conditions, anything like that, they're going to want to do that. And then the next question um, is, do I really need a dental x-ray? The answer is yes. 70% of the disease is not visible. And so if your pet is having periodontal disease, it's up under the gum line, you're not going to see that. The majority of their tooth is actually root. And so it's really important to get the x-rays to assess the roots of the teeth and assess the area under the gum line, the bone, everything like that. Again, depending on the veterinary clinic, it might be optional. Um, and it might, again, vary depending on your pet's dental health. So a dog like Shunka that has grade 4 periodontal disease, they're most likely definitely going to want to do dental x-rays because it most likely is affecting the underlying structures. A dog like Boo Boo or Nidra, at this point, probably not a whole lot going on under the surface. But again, you don't know unless you take those x-rays. And just because they're young and they don't have a high grade of periodontal disease does not mean that there's not a problem that needs to be addressed. And so it is really important that you get dental x-rays. But again, where I live, low income and such. And so we did offer it as an optional thing. But again, if the disease was the periodontal disease had progressed and was more severe, we would definitely push it. And you really need to get this versus a dog that had mild periodontal disease and was just in for more of a prophylactic cleaning. You know, we kind of weighed people's finances in there. And so again, it just kind of depends on where you live and something you're going to have to discuss with your vets. So, um, let's see. I really can't afford a dental cleaning. What can I do? And so there, most places take a thing called care credit, and what that is, it is a care credit, but you can only use it at your dental, or your veterinarian, your doctor, your dentist may take it as well, and so it is like a, a dental care credit card. Um, most often, where I live, the promotional period is six months, so if your bill is over 200 which if you're getting a dental cleaning, most likely it's going to be over 200 then you have interest-free for six months. So that is a really good option, but it does go off your credit. And so if that's not an option, you know, things to consider are things like family and friends. Maybe I don't know a whole lot about the GoFundMe, but that's always an option. Most veterinary clinics are not going to have a payment plan, but again, it just depends on your veterinary clinic, and so that's something to discuss. Sometimes they do have like an angel fund um, that they might be able to do cleanings. We had actually started that at my old clinic. It didn't get a lot of donations though, so um, it kind of was dependent on donations. But we had somebody, we had a hoarding case, and somebody donated a bunch of money because a lot of those teeth, those pets' teeth were bad. And so we used it for people who adopted those pets to get their teeth taken care of. And so it depends on the clinic. They might have something like that. Or your local animal um, programs might have something that can help you do it, get your pet's teeth taken care of. So it kind of just something to look around your area, but definitely speak to your friends, family, anybody that might be able to help you out. And if you really still can't, make sure you're setting aside a 
as much as you can afford each month to get your pet's teeth taken care of because the longer it goes on, the more problems there are going to be. So, um, my pet is older or has medical condition or elevated labs. This is safe to put them under anesthesia. Again, it depends. Age is not a reason not to go under anesthesia. Um, you, they can be older and be perfectly healthy. You're definitely going to want to do lab work, and if there are elevations, that's something your veterinarian is going to discuss with you and discuss the risk involved. Um, I've seen, because again, bad teeth can affect their organs, and so sometimes when there were high liver elevations, we would put them on medication for a month, bring them back in, repeat the blood work, and once we kind of got them where we would want, we'd go ahead with the dental cleaning. Sometimes kidney disease, um, depending on the severity, we would make sure we ran fluids throughout. And if they had like a heart condition, there are certain anesthetic protocols we would follow. Um, and even for older dogs, we followed a different anesthetic protocol than we did for younger dogs. And so yeah, that's something you can discuss with your veterinarian as well if you are concerned about your pet's age and health, but they do have bad teeth, um, is what their protocols are as far as anesthesia. If they should be willing to discuss that with you, if they just have kind of one set protocol or two, that is something maybe you would want to get a second opinion or find a different veterinarian or maybe go to a specialist if you could afford it. But they really should have different protocols depending on your pet's age and your pet's health. Um, and again, you're going to have to, if they do have blood work or labs, I mean blood work is labs, but they do have blood work or fluids as an optional thing, those are something you're definitely going to want to put your money towards to just lower the risk of the anesthetic event for your pet. Um, but again, that is something very personal that you need to talk with your veterinarian about. Like I said, Shuki has horrible teeth, but at this point in her life, we are not going to be doing anything about that. So it really just depends. Um, but especially age is not a reason not to get your pet taken care of or if they do have a heart condition um, or other medical condition. Again, it may not be a reason not to get their teeth taken care of, but that's definitely something you want to talk about with your veterinarian. Um, my veterinarian says my pet needs to have a lot of teeth extracted. Why? Again, if you're going to a specialty center, they have more options than your local veterinarian is going to have. Um, your local veterinarian is not going to have access to, to the tools to do like a root canal or anything like that. And so it just, they're just not going to be able to do that for you. And so extraction is their best option because if they leave that tooth in there, they're gonna, it's just still gonna be a source of pain, a source of infection, and just overall causing problems for your pet's health. And so extraction is most often the course of action when your pet has a bad tooth. Your veterinarian is not gonna pull a healthy tooth. <laughs> so it is extremely difficult to pull a healthy tooth. Sometimes like especially the bigger teeth, um, the one on top is called the carnasial tooth and it has multiple roots and so sometimes the front root is in terrible shape or the back roots in or the back roots are in terrible shape but the other roots are okay and they, it needs to come out and trying to get those healthy roots out can be extremely difficult so um, I promise you they're not going to pull a tooth without reason. And there's going to be a need for the tooth to come out if they're pulling that many teeth. And your pet's going to do just fine without those teeth. They're actually probably going to do better than they did with the teeth because those teeth were a constant source of pain and infection. And so if your pet is recommending many extractions, don't panic. Your pet's going to be fine. You might have to feed soft food for several days or switch to a soft food, but they're going to be fine. Um... But of course, as always, if you do have concerns, talk to your vet. If you're really wanting to avoid extractions, you need to spend the money to take your pet to a specialist. Uh, let's see here. 
is wet food bad for my pet's teeth? And the answer is no and yes. <laughs> um, it can, so that most of the time the wet food has more sugars in it, which just like our teeth can cause more problems. And it's also soft, so it's not as abrasive as dry food. Um, that's not to say that if you feed your pet wet food that they can't do just fine. You just might need to step up your home dental health game a little bit, which means brushing more often um, and such. If they don't have very many teeth, you're going to want to feed soft food anyway. A lot of times you can soften their hard kibble if they prefer hard kibble. And a lot of times even if they lose their teeth, some pets still want their hard kibble and they'll just kind of do a kibble at a time and they're perfectly fine. So it really just kind of depends on your individual pet. Um, but it can create more dental problems, but it's not necessarily bad for their teeth, but it, it's not as good. But again, depending on your pet, they might have bad teeth anyway. And honestly, even the abrasiveness of the dry food is not really enough to get that plaque and tartar. Um, you still need to do brushing and everything like that, but the sugar content is often higher in the wet food, which, like I said, just like our teeth does cause problems. So, what kind of things should I do to help my pet's dental health? Are bones or sticks okay? Things like that. The answer, bones and sticks you want to stay away from. Um, I know this can be controversial. There's some people that feed like a raw diet and feed raw bones and raw bones are fine. No bones are really good because one, they can break their teeth and two, they can cause problems inside. Even if they don't splinter, we've seen so many dogs that ate raw bones and they would just chew and chew and chew and it would turn into a powder and it would end up in their gut and just kind of like form like a cement block. And I saw the doctor have to go in and extract that more times than I care care to have. So, uh, bones aren't good. Sticks aren't good because they can cause, they can splinter and get up in the gums and cause infection and soreness and pain. Um, and also I've seen sticks end up getting jabbed into a dog's mouth, which can be very dangerous. And so sticks are not good. If you have a dog that's a stick lover, you might try to work on getting them to chew something else. They make chews that are kind of like artificial sticks or artificial wood essentially. Um, and then like the elk antler chews, they're not actual elk antlers or anything like that. They've been formulated to kind of break down. I have one these guys absolutely love. So there are chews. You kind of want to stay away from raw hides as well. Again, that kind of depends on your veterinarian, whether they're not going to recommend you stay away from raw hides, and it depends on your, your individual dog. So my one vet that I worked with, she was fine with raw hides as long as your dog would just slowly chew it and didn't swallow like whole chunks or anything like that. They do make several raw hide free options now, which I love to get my dogs. Um, so that's always an option to look into too. It's something they can chew. I know there has been a lot of controversies surrounding like the little greenies, but s stuff similar to that can be helpful for them to chew. I give my dogs whole raw carrots, which they absolutely love, and then that's kind of a chew for them. It takes them a little bit of time to chew, um, depending on the size of the carrot, things like that. And so again, it just really, really depends on your pet. Um, there's also like water additives that help uh, you just add it to the water and it kind of helps break down the enzymes. Those aren't as effective by themselves, but it's something you can add into your routine that can help. And then, of course, brushing. The more often you can brush, the better. You do want to make sure you're using a pet-safe toothpaste. Um, you want more treats because if it's the human stuff, one, the flavor is not very good for them. And two, it has... They're not able to spit it out like we we can, and some of the brands do have xylitol, which is toxic to dogs, 
and so you really want to make sure you're getting a toothpaste that's pet friendly and made for pets. Um, and then the more often you brush your teeth, the better. So if you can brush every day, that's going to be great. I have multiple dogs. I'm not brushing their teeth every night. I strive for once a week, but again, very rarely do I get once a week. Normally it's like every two weeks, but any little bit helps and it's better than none. If you haven't seen last week's video, I did a grooming day and I also brushed their teeth. I didn't do it as fully as I would normally do it because I was trying to video for you guys. Normally I'm a little bit more in depth when I do brush their teeth. There's different treats and some foods are formulated to help with their dental health. And so there's just different products on the market. Always double check with your veterinarian to see if it's safe, see if they heard anything that might be causing a problem. So um, that's really important as well. But I think that was the last question. Um, and so that's it for today. Moogoo wants more treats as always. So we will definitely see you guys next week. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And so you'll get notified when I do upload videos. And you'll see these cute guys. Huh? Yes. Yes. I know. You guys are so cute. Next week, we are actually going to be doing a story time. So that should be fun. Alright guys. We will see you next week. Until then, ponder this. Periodontal disease is the most common dental problem in our pets. And oftentimes they will have some sign of periodontal disease by the time they are three years old. So it's really important as puppies you get them used to brushing their teeth and overall handling of their mouth um, and that way they can be assessed effectively and you can catch any problems early and get them in and taken care of early. If you'd like to learn more I'll include links below in the description and we will see you next week. Bye!